It is 8 o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the DJ Roundtable tonight. And as always, we have some great DJs here. And we actually have a guest DJ tonight, all the way from Ohio, great state of Ohio. Uh, we have an awesome DJ here, as well as we have Cool Thing, and we have DJ Brentley, as always. Uh, hopefully, I'm, ho I'm hoping for DJ Fire and Matt to come in a little bit later. I think Matt's got some stuff going on. And DJ Fire, I know he's getting into with his landscaping business. He has stuff going on with that. I know he's got a bunch of stuff. I was talking to him. Uh, yeah, I was talking to him today, uh, or no, yesterday. I'm sorry, uh, on the phone, and he was saying he's going to try and make sure he gets in tonight. But um, I want to welcome our guest DJ tonight. And uh, sir, if you don't mind explaining where you're at, what you do, and how you got into DJing. Well, my name is Dwayne Dixon, and my DJ name is Hitman D Dub, and I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. I am a music teacher in the public school system, Cleveland Public School, um, school System, and I'm also a church musician. And I kind of like bagged into DJing. It's one of those things where one day my principal came to me and she was like, since you're the music teacher, I guess you can pro provide the music for the, um, the school dances. So I started doing the school dances, you know, using uh, Windows Media Player. I didn't have like a DJ software, I was just playing music. And then one day one of the kids said, you know, my father DJs. And then he showed me um, virtual DJ. So I started using virtual DJ for a little bit. I didn't have a controller, I was using um, a mouse. And then another kid came and said, you know, my father has this controller thing. And so I ended up for that um, Christmas time, um, Guitar Center had like a, a sale on one of the small Hercule controllers. So I bought that and started working that. And then eventually the kids was like noticing that I was getting pretty good at it. And then also um, our gym teacher is also a DJ. So he does a lot of weddings. And then he noticed that I was starting to get good. He's like, you know, you really should start thinking about doing weddings. And I was like, nah, because I didn't want to deal with you know, contracts and dealing with people I don't know. I was more comfortable with my friends and family. And then, yeah, and then, friends yeah. Family. yeah, exactly. And then um, we did a program and a couple of, of the um, people from our school board was at the program. And they was like, you know, you're pretty good with the music. And then they started complimenting me so I was like maybe I should start to kind of like take this seriously so I ended up buying a um uh xx2 controller a big controller because I had one of the little small pioneer we goes by that time and then once I got that from guitar center guitar center at the time if you bought a, a, a controller they'll offer two months of um free DJ lessons so I did the DJ lessons, and that's when I went from virtual DJ to Serato. And then ever since then, I never turned back. And then eventually I did take up um, my um, colleague's offer to DJ a wedding. So he took me to a couple of his weddings and let me shadow him and DJ. And then now I'm just doing it on my own. And just, I guess, backed into it, and it just became almost sec second nature. And how, how long have you had the, your business for officially? Um, I would say 2015, 2016. You, you, you took the plunge one in the business for yourself? Yeah. But you're, yeah, again, you're DJing before that, just that you didn't have officially a business. And right. And you yourself into the business world, and you got yourself as a sole proprietor and, you know, into the lovely world of owning a business like the rest of us here <laughs> right yeah i can actually relate to Dwayne dixon because i started djing for mainly family i started out with a cd collection of boom box and then when i got into volunteering at my church they wanted someone to dj a block party and just provide music i started you know i started out with apple music 
connecting it to a speaker and then I got a party mix that summer and I knew that was something I wanted to do full time. And then people started booking for other events because they see me at other like previous events. So I can I can relate. Well, uh, uh Hunter, him, uh, you and uh, uh, Dwayne are kind of similar a little bit. I know, you, and I know Hunter. You do friends and family people. You, you know, people who yeah. say, "Hey, I, I I know Hunter. Go go talk to him. He's an awesome DJ." And you do small parties and weddings and stuff. And uh, you said just before we got in the air this weekend, you'll do a local event that you're all excited for. And if you're watching right now on YouTube. Go to go to Cool Thing Entertainment. Go see his gig log for the 30th birthday party he just did. Awesome job, dude. I saw that. That was absolutely awesome. Um, but again, he's got a gig coming up this weekend, so we're looking for another gig yeah, log. Sam's Corner, because yeah, we're we're reopening Sam's Corner in Garden City Beach. So if you do want to come down to Garden City Beach, make sure you come on a Saturday and come this Saturday and see me DJ. Because we are reopening after we got hit with bad with Hurricane Ian, it did did severe damage. Well, congratulations! You know, good good for you, man. Enjoy yourself. Be safe, as always. And we always wish safety to all our and DJs to, yeah, watching and just, as well as yeah. here. And just today, I almost got booked another thirtieth birthday party for someone I know, and it's a family member of a friend that I went to school with for over twenty go. years. So, uh, Dwayne, going back to you. How do you uh, how do you find your clients? And again, I know I know you originally started with friends and family, like Hunter does. Cool thing. And you want you want to start to get into weddings. Uh, how do you find your clients? How how do clients find you as your business? Well, of uh, of late, now that I have got my name out there, um, I started doing YouTube videos, and then I post them on, I repost them on like Facebook and all that, and they be like, "Oh yeah, I forgot he DJs." So that's how I, I get it. And then word of the mouth. Um, and then I got one from Wedding Wire last year. And so it's pretty much just basically word of mouth or seeing my my videos. And they were like, oh, yeah, I forgot he DJs. So, oh, we're getting DJ Solstice in here. Yeah, Matt's coming in. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Matt, DJ. there you go. Matt, welcome. Hello. Welcome, Dwayne here. Dwayne Dixon, all the way from beautiful Ohio. Um, <laughs> Hi, Solstice. Hey. And um, he's just telling us how he how he got into the business and how he started. Uh, he is a music teacher in the public school system there, and he is uh, also a DJ. And he started his business in 2015, and uh, he started originally on, on virtual DJ. Now he does Serato, and um, you know it's it, he was talking about we're talking about controllers and stuff like that. And uh, I was asking him how he finds his clients. And he was saying that he gets it through Facebook, through social media, YouTube. And he actually got a customer off of uh, Wedding Wire, which is great. Uh, and I, I wanted to also ask you, sir, uh, before we go on to our, our first subject of the night, um, since you are in the Midwest and you are in a more a large, a good sized city, you know, Chicago is a big city. Um, Lacrosse is kind of a small city. It's it's decent size, but still small. What's Lacrosse? What, what fifty thousand, sixty thousand people? Fifty fifty thousand in Lacrosse, give or take, and then probably another forty thousand within twenty minutes. With with a suburb or two of in the surrounding area, unincorporated yeah. areas. Yeah. So you you roughly have like ninety thousand people. What's yeah. what's in your area? How many people do you have in your area that live live in your area? Is it a little over a million people? Who me? Yeah. I, I never really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Cleveland, I would say, I guess you could say Cleveland's kind of large, but Cleveland is also made up of a bunch of little suburbs. Oh, you yeah. know, even though we say Cleveland, we have Cleveland Heights, <laughs> East Cleveland, Shaker, West Side Cleveland, East Side Cleveland. Well, so. it, it, it's just like here, if I, if I say the town I live in, people are like, what's that? If I say Chicago, oh, you're, you're Chicago. Even though I'm in the, in the far western burbs, you know, from Chicago, I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm not next door. I'm pretty far away. Um, I still can say Chicago. Heck, Rockford, which is even, it's by the Wisconsin border and pretty far west, they say they're Chicago. You know, Kenosha says they're part of Chicago. So <laughs> it's kind of funny because, uh, 
you know, you always go to that. So even if you live out in the burbs and stuff like that, you know, it, it's just funny. And with a, a, a good sized city like you and stuff like that, again, obviously there's other DJs in the area, like we all run into, you know, and it's one of the things always trying to find ourselves different from other DJ services. So what sets your DJ service different from, let's say, someone else's DJ service? What sets you apart from them? I think even though there we have a lot of DJs, so I think everybody, there's enough, you know, out there that everybody can have their own little niche because you have your karaoke DJs. I'm fortunate to be in a school and inside of a church that does a lot of community stuff. So that's how I can get uh, my foot inside there and doing summer camps. And then you have your club DJs and then your big wedding DJs like solstice that have the big companies and all that so we kind of like will run into each other but then at the same time we don't get in each other's way because each person has their own niche oh, yeah. and their own neighborhood that they can um kind of go to good good i'm glad i'm glad to hear that i'm glad to see you here and again welcome to the round table sir and to start off tonight uh we actually have from one of our youtube chatters and uh, thank you for submitting the uh, the question. And let me go to the tubes. And so I can repeat the question exactly. And I sent this all to everyone. Um, so everyone could see what was going on and what's the question. Um, and this is, uh, again, for one of our, our chatters on YouTube. And if you're watching this live, please don't be afraid to put something down in the chat. Um, what is your opinion on the importance of suiting up for weddings? Do clients even care or notice? I just shifted to wearing slacks and a button up for my uh, wedding attire. Still clean and classy, but look very comfortable. Um, but very comfortable. No tie and no jacket, pure freedom. I'm kind of the same way. Um, I usually wear, if you look at my videos, I have I have like five gray dress shirts. They're all within the shade of each other. Uh, it's kind of funny. I don't want to wear black because a lot of the servers wear black. So I don't want to look like a server. I don't usually wear a tie unless I really have to. And I do have ties. I actually, when I worked in the corporate world, I had to wear ties. I love ties. I, I had a big tie collection. I don't have a big tie collection anymore because some got destroyed, some got misplaced, but I still have a good selection of nice ties. But um, it's one of the things that I found, I want, you know, I'm a background character, not a foreground character. I know one person here, one person here, I have seen them plenty of times under the gig log, and that's just Matt down in California. You dress to the nine with a, a, a awesome suit. I'd probably say... And don't take this the wrong way with any of the other guys here. <laughs> but I've seen other, other everyone else dress. You dress professionally, dress nice. But Matt, when he gets dressed up, he looks like he's falling off a movie a movie set. <laughs> he, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the, the uh, Aston Martin to pull up and to say, "Sir, your car." You know, that's what I'm waiting I'll, for. So Matt, I'll tell you. I'll, t I'll tell you my secret. Um, well, so I I used to wear. I've, I've been through phases. I used to just wear slacks and like a nice long sleeve shirt, sometimes a tie, sometimes not. Um, and then I had the only really nice suit that I had was for my buddy's wedding. Um, that one, it was kind of a crappy Calvin Klein suit. So after a bunch of washes and dry cleans, it pretty much got destroyed. So in the meantime, I was wearing just slacks and a nice shirt. Um, and then we got the polos and the company polos, which are nice, but I feel like they're not they're not as nice for some of the weddings I was doing. So um, now I have three suits and one tux. Um, and if you go to this website, it's called Alan Dupetit, D-U-P-E-T-I-T. -E the suits are like a hundred bucks, 120 bucks uh, or less. And um, you just find your size. I get slim fit and then I have a tailor that I take them to. So for me, two suits fully tailored out the door, it was like 350 bucks. Um, so uh, Alan Dupettit, really great, high quality suits. I have a, a, this other local shop that I got the suit that's in my latest gig log is in. Um, that one's pretty nice. But uh, yeah, the thing with, with those is like, if it's a less, it, it depends on the package because 
when I raise my rates, now it's like, okay, I'm looking at them. We're, we're offering a more luxury service. So I should be dressed appropriately. Um, the jacket obviously doesn't stay on the whole night, but at least during introductions and moments where I'm visible, I try to look nice like that. For smaller weddings where it's less a budget, less a big deal, slacks and a shirt's fine. Um, but yeah. And then for, for, that's just for weddings. For my other events, you know, pants and a polo. But. Okay. And again, uh, Hunter. I know again. I I know depending on the event and depending um, on the time of year and depending on the time of year because it gets really hot and humid here in South Carolina yeah. in the hundreds. Yeah. So if I do like an outdoor wedding or something, I might have to wear shorts and a a polo shirt just to keep myself from burning up and passing out. But and I, with, yeah, with an indoor event, it's mostly uh, a decent suit. Okay, and then Brettley, what about you, sir? What do you what do you feel is uh, what do you wear? I I always I don't wear a jacket. I really don't. I will wear shirt, you know, black shirt, black slacks, and my dry cleaning bill went through the roof over the last couple of years. That's for sure. But I will definitely wear a, I I have plain color vests. And I have some, you know, pattern vests, but and with the matching tie, and I'll do that. But I won't ever dress down at a wedding. I don't care what you know, how much they're paying me or whatnot. If we're indoors or out, I'm blessed that most of my weddings are indoors. I'll say I think I have three legitimate barn weddings this year, and being in May or being in September, October up here. I'm I'm praying for the best. I really am. But I will I company shirt, I won't do it. When I load in, yeah, I will you are definitely can tell I'm coming in. I've got shorts, I've got gym shoes, I've got a t-shirt. So if I shred it all, I can still make a quick change and I'm not gonna be all you know, all torn up and I'm not gonna stink either. Cause you know how it gets in the summer when we're you know running in and out. Again, fortunately, with celebrations on the river, I have realized I have like stretches where I'm there six or seven weddings in a row this year. Where I'm just gonna dish my gear in the bathroom and be done with it. But that that makes my life a million times easier and less wear and tear on clothes and all that too. But yeah, for weddings, I don't dress down at all. And because I really don't do anything else with the weddings and clubs, clubs you get me in a hoodie. My latest sponsorship endeavor or endorsement deal for three and one energy drink. I've got their hats now and stuff like that. But clubs, it's either, you know, jeans, hoodie, t-shirt or cargo shorts. And as it gets warmer, you won't, you won't see me ever really wearing sleeveless clothes. because I really don't like showing off all my ink. And that's part and parcel why I'm always covered up at weddings that you only see what's just kind of like up to here on my hands. And with a black shirt and the shadows cast, you're really not going to notice my ink. Well, you have well, you, you have on your one arm the kind of Chicago flag. Yep. Yeah, just the Chicago stars. Yeah. The Chicago stars are different stars. They're kind of unique stars. They're not the normal, but the American flag star. They're a little bit different. So that's a Chicagoan, and, and, and he is a Chicagoan yep. like I am. I, I got it the summer before I left. And there you go. And that, that's that's one of the things, again, uh, being professional, hiding that stuff a little bit. Yeah. Now, I do know you do wear a baseball cap. It just your you your signature move, your signature thing you uh, for uh, some of the, uh, for some of the weddings. And it's, it's one of the things that, you know, your market is a little different than some markets. Could you do that here in Chicago? You could. But some people may be like, why? They're a little smaller market. People are a little more laid back, probably. They don't care yeah. as much. Um, and see, that yeah, makes a big that. distinction on why I dress the way I do, actually. Because you have, you know, there's DJs for every budget. And you have the $500 DJ that shows up in jeans, gym shoes, on a good day, a polo shirt, bad day, you know, whatever he feels like or they feel like. And it, you know, the range of caliber of everything based on pricing. And Solstice said it really great. I, I'm, you're paying me between you. Know, like if you pay for my best package with a photo booth, 
we're, you're paying me $4,000 plus. I better play the part, especially at the certain venues I'm at. And that, that's the thing is that, you know, you want, to, you want to look, depending on the event and where it's at, what you're doing, I feel there should be different levels. You know, there's events like I will wear a polo to, you know, um, and there's events I will wear a dress shirt to, depending on what the event is. You know, I, again, I do weddings primarily, but once in a while I get a phone call, hey, do you mind doing something for me? And, I, I, you know, it's a, a brother or a bride or a sister or a groom or whatever it is. Hey, I need your, I, I really enjoyed it. Can you really help me out? It's something I don't market for, but if it's like a, like I've done, once in a while I do a corporate event, I have a friend I, I from the old neighborhood where I grew up with, I do his Christmas party. I wear a polo for that. You know, it, it's, it's still professional dress pants, nice polo, that kind of stuff right there. But for a wedding, again, it, it's dress pants, dress shirt. And again, I, I'm more of a background character. Uh, I'm not as good looking as Matt. Uh, so Matt, he gets, he can wear a suit and look awesome. I, I wore a suit a few times, depending on the event. And I always feel I look out of place wearing a suit, a you know, fat guy in a little coat, you know, I feel it's like, you know, Chris Farley there going fat guy in a little coat, you know, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so Mr. Dixon. Yep. You, sir. Uh, how, how, what do you think about dressing? Well, for me, I, I, Definitely wear um, a dress suit for a wedding because my first few weddings has been either I've been been shadowing somebody or I had to fill in. So when I come in, it's like the um, bridal party and the family is expecting one DJ, but they get me. So I have to make sure that I'm dressed and I look the part to kind of like ease their story their stress because a lot of times there was a couple of times the dj for some reason couldn't make the um the wedding reception so they got me to do it but i guess they didn't tell the people who you know hired them and so they was like had their eyebrows kind of like turned up when i walked in so definitely for weddings um i come in a suit but you know i i change into a suit I don't bring my stuff in in the suit, and then for anything else, it depends on what it is. But I definitely, whatever I wear, it's branded, so it have like my name and company name and all that. Okay, and that that's that to me is you know um, like one of the things I do. I have uh, Tracy. I have and we have name tags. Um, we got them from uh, one of the companies online or magnet name tag. So I wear I wear a name tag. So that way people get to look at it and go, oh, hey, your buddy. Okay, you know, fine and great, no problem. And it has our logo. But a lot of times, Trace doesn't like wearing a name tag because they think that she works for the facility. Tacky. And they'll ask her for, can you turn the temperature down? Can you give me salt? Can you give me another drink? Uh, I dropped my napkin. <laughs> can you give me another napkin? And Tracy's like, Tracy's always professional and goes, okay, let me get someone to help you with that real quickly. She goes off and grabs you know, the room captain or her service. Hey, you know, this person asking for this. But she's always like, they're always asking me. So sometimes she doesn't want to wear her name tag. Um, but I'm like, they see you're in charge talking to the bride and groom. They're going to gravitate toward you because they know that you're the person in charge. So uh, <laughs> one of our uh, our chatters out there, uh, for weddings in Quintanera's, I do dress up all the way, just out of respect. But that's just me. Uh, he also has said that I've seen DJs in jeans in a regular T-shirt, and it looks horrible to me. It, depending on the event. Now, I've done some weddings that are country-themed weddings that they want you to dress in jeans and, you know, basically jeans and, uh, you know, not dress shirt, but there like, you go. This was, yeah, this was my first wedding, and it was like 66 degrees, and that was the perfect weather for a suit. Oh, yeah, but, we're in a jacket, 66 degrees, that's perfect. But yeah, but, but, but during spring, yeah, but during spring and summer months, I don't really wear a suit because it would burn. I don't up. blame you, it's hot, yeah. But um, we're in jeans and a plaid shirt, and I, we actually did a wedding, there's a Hawaiian-themed wedding, and they had uh, uh, the not the the loud Hawaiian shirts you think of when you hear Hawaiian shirt, you think of multicolor. These were like um, the really cool white kind of like wispy kind of uh, nice dress shirts they have for her wine. And I, we've done some um, Hispanic ones, uh, a Cuban one. And they wore the traditional Cuban dress shirts, which are 
flowing and, and bigger and wider. I still wore a dress shirt and dress pants, but they did more of the, the Cuban thing. Um, and again, I want to respect what the client wants to have. But again, they ask what I wear. You know, I usually wear dress shirt, dress pants. I want to dress professionally. <laughs> Someone wearing jeans and a t-shirt going to a wedding and it's not themed for that. That's not the theme for it. I'm sorry, that's that's unprofessional. But the other thing I look at, what is the price of that DJ? Are they the bottom barrel discount DJ no skills? Or are they one, like one of us here who cares about their clients and cares about the work they do and cares about taking care of those customers? And it, I think everyone here can say, first and foremost, we put our customers first. I know I've seen gig locks from Hunter. Even his 30th birthday party, he just did. It was, he cared about the people, the person's birthday. Uh, Brentley, I've seen your gig logs. You care about your customer. Dwayne, I've seen your gig logs. You care about, Matt cares about his customer. Matt, his big thing, he wants everyone to enjoy himself, have fun. But he still takes care of the customers. And I think that us as DJs who care about our clients and customers we want to make sure that we are on a professional level with them and they feel yeah. confident not only in us, but we also embrace that professionalism and look professional. Uh, last thing is going into there, uh, you know, with looking like um, someone like, like you're blowing in a homeless encampment. Uh, you know, and here in the show, again, you know, a lot of times you see me wear black T-shirts and stuff like This is relaxing. This is, you know, this is fun stuff. It, this is, you know, something I wear around, but I have tons of, I have like 30 of these black t-shirts, so. <laughs> you can see what I'm wearing. I'm wearing jeans and just a plain shirt from Hollister. Exactly. And you got, you, you got, you got Dwayne wearing, you know, uh, you know, he's, he's got a sweatshirt on and he's relaxed, just like, you know, Brentley. And you got, you know, Matt, well, Matt's in SoCal. Again, it's, it's like you, uh, cool thing, a little bit warmer temperature. He's got, he's got a light shirt on. But again, again, and here it's it's relaxed and laid back. When we um, when we do the stuff in, uh, you know, professionally, we want to look, make sure we look professional, and again, uh, honor the customer, honor the client, and um, you know, taking care of them is is the important thing. So, uh, with that said, right there, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube right now. Make sure you subscribe to everyone's here to all the channels. There's tons of channels here to subscribe to, and there's quick links down below. You can click quick quick link to those channels. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. It helps the algorithm over on YouTube. If you're watching this live, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, we do this on Tuesday nights live on Twitch, and we broadcast this on YouTube about uh, the Monday afterwards usually. Uh, last couple ones, I was sick, so didn't get a chance to do that. So it was a little bit of a backlog, but they're all out there now. Um, so going on to the next question I have for you guys for the panel. Since we all, um, you know, do different events, including, uh, you know, weddings and stuff like that, and we have to deal with other vendors. In a very brief, short sentence do you have you run into other vendors be it photographer videographer facility owner uh bartender whatever who was very hard to work with and yet you overcame that and won them over and made them your friend so hunter i know yet you have not as much experience as everyone else does i know you do fewer weddings okay. and stuff yeah i have, but yeah, I have some experience but I'm, i've never ran into a problem with the vendors they've all been nice and helpful and supportive and cooperative and they were just super chilling way back okay so you're you're, you're lucky man i i i got asked for lottery numbers because i wish i had your kind of luck <laughs> <laughs> so uh matt i'm gonna go with you next um have you run into vendors that have been difficult to deal with and how did you win them over uh let's see Vendors that are difficult to deal with. Where do I start? Uh, coordinators. Um, coordinators are the ones that just... I, I run into more annoying coordinators than anything. Coordinators and photographers. Um, photographers, not much, though. Um, also video people. I just like... People that don't speak English is is a growing trend over here because they're dirt cheap 
for compared to the competition. So like they'll hire a videographer from like Norway uh, or, you know, wherever Germany or whatnot, that doesn't really speak English. And so when he's like asking you for something or like he's trying to do something and you're like trying to understand and there's a heavy accent that can sometimes get a little difficult. Um, but a lot of brides are going overseas because, Hey, they'll film your wedding for a thousand dollars versus paying four or five to somebody over here. So, um, but it's not that they're difficult to work with. It's just a like language barrier. It's, I've had some, it's, a, it's a barrier. I've had some coordinators that are just like, they, they try to run the show and they don't really understand certain parts of like what myself and the client have talked about versus what they've talked about with their coordinator. So um, that's where there's sometimes gets issues like the one over the top wedding I did and you know, she just didn't give us any time to breathe or be ready or any, like, it was just like, like, lady, we need time to set up the photo booth. You can't just rush me into intros 15 minutes after you open the reception hall. Like, you know, it's just like, I don't know. She was, and we had plenty of time. It was just like, rush, 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 rush. And I was just like, relax, relax, you know? So I don't really have a, like, I, I just smile and nod, eh, whatever. Um, it's just, it's just another vendor I won't recommend. So that's just that's the way I look at it which I, I don't need them to recommend me either because I didn't enjoy working with them so there's a very specific set of vendors I recommend that I love working with um, there's others that they're fine there's no problems and if they recommend me great if I recommend them great but I don't know okay so Dwayne what about you what about you what is your experience have you run into vendors that were difficult at first and you won them over and made them your BFF um no not vendors my issues came with um clients that don't believe in sticking with the with the timeline and then they want to run over but the vendor you know the owners are saying no it's time to cut it so now i'm cut caught in between so as far as vendors vendors they're cool yeah, that reminds me. Clients who want me to open the dance floor early before we even start the first dance. This happened to me at my last wedding two years ago. Like there were some people there who wanted to dance before we even did the first dance and all the formalities. I'll just I said, wait a minute, we're not open the dance floor yet. Not until after the first dance. Tell them to go to Jersey. That's what they do over there. They they just dance as soon as cocktail hour starts. Or at, right after the first, right after the grand entrance, they do cock, they do a dance set. Yeah, they usually do the first. They come in great. The grand entrance, they do the first dance, and then they go into everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, versus like here in Chicago, we do the the dances after, after dinner, and you know we, it's usually introduction, grand entrance, cake cutting, speeches. There's a prayer, and then dinner. That's that's usually Chicago way, and then. The way we do, we do lat, we do uh, the, the first dance last of the three dances because that way people are enticed to come in a dance floor with a couple. That's what we've learned. That's what we feel works best for our clients. So, Brentley, not to have you outdone, but have you run into a vendor or you know caterer or uh, florist or anything that was difficult? <laughs> excuse me, difficult to deal with that you actually you know, won them over and. Uh, May, kind of main your BFF. You know, I was watching Nick's show a few weeks back when he got in trouble with a venue or some a vendor. And by the end of the day, he, uh, and I think it was a gig log or something. I can't remember what he said, but he's like, I just didn't care anymore if I won them over or not. And that happened to me last October. And it, it, it just, it, it, how do you put it? Some people you can't win over. And some venues, some vendors, no matter what, are all going to think theirs doesn't stink, even if it does. And I guess I've been really fortunate that I've only worked with a few vendors that have been trying to work with outside of the one venue. And even with those venues, vendors that have been kind of trying to work with and difficult I've found a way to, you know, amicably make it through the day and tolerate their BS. Like something like you were saying, you know, working with coordinators, there has been this massive boom up in my market of women who 
oh, I planned my wedding and now I just planned my friend's wedding. They both went great. So I'm going to do this professionally now. And uh, it, there was another one of the weddings I did last October. And the, the coordinator, I'm like, we're going to do the grand march. I'm like, okay, well, go round them up. Round up your troops. Let's go. You're the coordinator. I'm not doing any of this today. You have it all. 20 minutes goes by, and I'm like, yeah, okay. I And generally speaking, I will figure out who in the wedding party I need to make friends with. Even if it means I'm playing a Britney Spears or Taylor Swift song that I don't want to hear, fine, cool, uh, whatever. But I'll make friends with that one person early on and be like, okay, I'm going to need your help. Can you get everybody together for me? Uh, but there's been a lot of these coordinators that just don't do this. And with that same wedding, after that, I'm like, can you round them up to go? They're like, we want, they want to do the first dance. Now I'm like, wow. Okay. Where are they? I see she's over at the bar. He's over there outside smoking a cigar with his buddies and they want to do the, can you round them up before I announce them to the dance floor? And that's been a very big thing with a lot of these new coordinators. Most every other vendor that I've worked with, and it's been knock on wood, very cool that everyone's on the same page that this is what we want to get done for this couple's day. Now, preemptively, if I've never worked with a vendor before, the week of, I'm hitting them up. I want to not necessarily be their best friend, but videographers, what what sends do you need from me? Because uh, you're not taping stuff to my gear. You're gonna, I will give you XLR, eighth of an inch, RCA quarter, whatever feed you want from me. Let me know ahead of time. Or day of, I'm giving you an XLR and you're stuck dealing with it. And it, by doing that with a lot of the videographers I had to work with, new venues, it alleviates any of the, you know, headache that you might run into. Because you're like, oh, this guy's calling us Monday before a Saturday wedding or two weeks prior to that. He means business. He knows what he's doing. They kind of get over any issues they have before even walk in the door. It saves and that pre-call, just like we talk to our couples about what they want from our attire to lighting to music based on their packages. I'm more than willing to take an hour out of every Monday for every wedding I have coming up and call all those vendors I have to work with. Save everybody a lot of grief. Oh, this is the timeline I have. Change from what I've got. One of us will verify it just to make sure and keep on track for the entire day. And this that's just how I started doing things a couple of years ago. And it's made it, it definitely made a world of difference as how the vendor vendors and venues I'm working with approach me when I get there, along with the referral aspect of it. Like more often than not, the most of the photographers, videographers I work with, knock on wood, refer me quite frequently. It was even part like even down to my attention to detail of looking at, you know, couples like X, Y, and Z TV shows and movies. I'll take a little look at those soundtracks. I'll see what I can pull from those. Do a little homework so I bring something just a little better to the table for my weddings. With clubs, 90% of the clubs I'm in, they know what I do. I have friends that work there. It's a good working relationship. Very, very seldom do I go and take a club gig somewhere where I'm not where I will feel out of my league or in the wrong spot. A few years ago, right when we opened COVID and before, yeah, I was taking whatever I get my hands on. But now that I've kind of figured out exactly which way I want to send this all, how I, you know, the clubs I work at, as opposed to the weddings I'm at, both hand in hand, I don't want anybody to have any issues with me. Um, you know, for clubs, for example, Grant Hart, the drummer from Who's Do said this to me when I booked him as, on a solo show. I don't ever want any venue losing money on me. I keep that to heart and make sure the venues I'm working at are always happy. So there, that's my two cents. Oh, yeah. And again, you're, you're clubbing, club DJing is a little bit differently than event. But ultimately, it depends who your client is. Your your bar is your client. And the people there to bar, the people who are the patrons of the bar are paying there, and the more you can get them to stay there, the more they can spend money, the more they enjoy the music, the more they drink, eat, be merry, and hang out. Exactly. The, the bar makes, the bar is happier. Versus like a wedding or an event, a corporate event or a party, 
it is a different thing. And, you know, one of the things like with our business here, my business is with Tracy being the coordinator uh, and, you know, she's my life boss as well as business boss, basically. Um, it's one of the things that uh, she, which I'm, I'm blessed with, she takes a lot of that burden off of chasing after <clears throat> uh, bridal parties because it's, as you know, sometimes it's like herding cats and uh, bridal parties, sometimes uh, they go see something shiny, they go running off and you have to go after them, chase them down. And um, she has done that plenty of times. And, and sometimes, you know, bridal parties are very organized. They're, they're pretty good. Sometimes, you know, you can, you got to go chase mom down or because again, photographer takes them off and take pictures or whatever. So it's always that thing that, and Tracy, um, the wedding we just did uh, this past Saturday, yeah, this past Saturday, small wedding, 50 people. Uh, if you if you saw on Facebook, I posted a couple of pictures and we posted some stuff on Instagram uh, of the stuff. 50 person wedding, not a huge wedding. Tracy still did like around, I want to say uh, 16,000, close to 17,000 steps. And the venue's not that big. And that's because of chasing after people, moving all, going over to place, talking to the photographer, talking to the venue manager, talking to, talking to the, uh, the uh, room captain. So she she has like, you know, all these steps because she's walking around going after people, chasing after people, you know, and, we, and again, we share MC work. So we both, you know, with the grand entrance, she actually tell, you know, tells people who the people are coming in and monitors people coming in and make sure the right person walks in. So she's got the microphone It's Bob and Sue. It's Bob and Sue walking in and she announces Bob and Sue and we share MC work. So we both, you know, go back and forth on it between the two of us. So it's, I, I have that, that partner in crime, which I'm blessed with to do that. And sometimes I run into, you know, vendors who are harder to deal with. She can um, kind of like win them over and talk to them and, you know, not, you know, kind of be that middle person to say, Hey, okay, fine. Great. But let's try this. Let's try that. And uh, work those things out. So that way they're not, uh, we're, we're not, you know, not sound that not sound bad, not bumping heads, but we're doing what's right for the client. We're right for the customer. Because at the end of the night, we are all there to do one job. We're all there to make sure that client, that customer is happy. We want that five-star review. We want that, you know, like Hunter, when he when someone recommends him, says, hey, you got to go hire Hunter for your party. The dude is awesome. Or they go to Dwayne and they go, this guy is awesome DJ. You know, he does stuff at his church. He does stuff at school, but he does weddings, he does parties. Hey, you know what? You got to hire him for your party. Or you know, again, you, Brentley, with you for a bar or with Solstice, with uh, anything, you know, it's one of the things that word of mouth is very important to us and winning those people over and having those advocates for us, I feel are very, very important. And having people, having an advocacy for your business is huge. It's very, very huge. So um, I'm going to go to the yes, no question of the night. Yeah, so this is uh, one of the things I always like, I'm, I'm doing this lately and uh, I drive you guys a little crazy here because you guys know what's coming. <laughs> it's a yes, no question. There's no right or wrong answer. It's not a get, gotcha question of that. It's very easy and simple. Um, with the year just starting for most parts with weddings and stuff like that, are you fully booked for this year? Are you taking any more bookings for this year? Or are you kind of saying, hey, you know what? I have enough bookings. I'm good right now. So like for us, I'm going to start with myself. Yes, we're still taking bookings. Do we have a lot of dates open? No, we don't have a lot of dates open. So we still have some dates open, but we have a lot of bookings. And if we book up a few more dates, I may get to the point to say, you know what? No more, because I don't want to burn myself out or burn my wife out and not be able to enjoy ourselves, not be able to enjoy our time together. So the thing is that, you know, we, we I will limit myself a little bit on certain things. And, and the reason why is that, again, I don't want to burn ourselves out, but I do have dates open, but I'm also coming close to saying that I'm almost booked fully. So right now I still have dates open but I'm getting close. So cool thing. Do you have dates open? Yes always. or no? Yes, always. Because I, ever since 2022 happened with all my hackings and stuff, I 
been slowly getting bookings, but I always have dates open for friends and family to book me for parties, weddings, or whatever. Okay. Dwayne, yeah, would... are you yep. open, yes or no, sir? Yeah, I still got openings, but mine's a sporadic. Uh, I get booked at the last minute because it's like I have no bookings to have them back to back to back to back. So mine's is kind of like, I guess you can save in waves, high waves and low waves. So, but I'm still open for yeah. a lot of dates. So you got, you got, you have dates open. You're still, and you're a last, you're what's called a last minute DJ. There's a few other DJs like that. I know that yeah. always seem to get called like, like a me, week yeah. or two before an event. Like, Hey, you know, are you open? And it's like, yeah, I just happen to be. Yeah. <laughs> it happens <laughs> to us once in a while, but you know, most of the time, like with weddings, most people usually book out six months, mm -hmm. a year or more out. So we're kind of blessed with that. But sometimes with some of these people, it's like they wait to the last minute and they're like, are you open? It's like, well, yeah. Or I, I can't tell you times I, we had to say, no, we're booked. All right. Uh, DJ Bretley. What about you, sir? Are you open or are you fully booked? It's a catch 22 for me. It really is. I could honestly, I don't have to take any more weddings this year and I'm okay. And when come, uh, you know, end of October, November, December, into next year, it's like, you know, I can just go back doing clubs. And with the number of weddings I took on this year, part parcel because the ex-girlfriend who was hand in hand with me making some of the decisions on what gigs I was taking, I took too many weddings this year. I have 85 left, or yeah, wait, 82 left to go. And that wasn't my number one choice. So I've real, and then sent out my club dates going all the way into August. So, and with Oktoberfest and lacrosse here a month later, I've got a couple other Saturdays I'm, or Fridays I'm looking at for September that are not weddings. And I've got a couple Sundays in October, November, and December I'm willing to part with maybe. And one more Saturday I could part with for weddings. And that also hand in hand coincides with Green Bay, the Packers, Stadium View. When they release the NFL schedule, I made a say I'm done for the just so I can do a couple of the Packers games at Stadium View in Green Bay and go there Saturday night, get up at you know 9 a.m. and be on the stage at 11 a.m. Saturday or Sunday morning and go until bar time that night which is far more fun than doing a wedding. It's just tiresome and a little cold. So, I yeah, I could, so. I could call it quits for the year and be done booking and I'd be okay. So if if I'm doing my math right, there's 52 weeks in a year. You have 85 weddings booked. That means a few weeks, you got three weddings, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Oh, there's one week. I have a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, straight through. Well, there you Some go, of man. these couples have actually contacted me and going, we've seen your, we know uh, one of your front, uh, friends that you did just a very small family wedding. We're in that same boat. Our families are making us do that. We've been together for 10 years. We've been together for 15 years. We want to do what we don't want a big, you know, big to do, but can you do what you did for our friends on this day here? And we want it on a Tuesday. So no one can really do anything except come celebrate for a little while and go home. So I've got a few of those. I've got a, I, I've got a lot of Sundays this year, a few Thursdays. Yeah, I, hate when you work on I know you hate when I work on Sundays. <laughs> and she's not a fan of it. Well, but, one one day she'll be old enough she can come and she can be a roadie and help out and, you know, she <laughs> could. Uh, I'm sure she could probably DJ a little bit. I'm sure she, she can stuff up. Oh, how many of those? Taking over a photo booth for me this summer. <laughs> That's it. How many, how many of those are uh, are uh, at the, your fun, uh, your best favorite place celebrations? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How many? How many there this year? God, maybe forty of them. God. <laughs> and they officially reopened the room they were remodeling and are starting to book dates for it. It reopens in July, and I've got a handful I'm talking to about doing a couple off dates at the end of the year for that. But I'm also like. I would much rather you know do the club thing and have a lot more fun with it. it. I mean, like, and what you said, one of those last minute availabilities, 
Saturday night was supposed to be a date night that I had planned with the ex-girlfriend. And I messaged one of my friends at one of the clubs down the street from me. And I'm like, you got Saturday open? She's like, yeah, why not? It turned out to be one of the best nights I've had in ages. On the other hand, it closed pretty much every bar on downtown 3rd Street by midnight, 1 o'clock, because there was no one anywhere but the club I was at. I had a friend DJing at the club Legends, which is connected by like a doorway, so it's complete open to either club. And I could see straight through to the club in the dancing cage. There was no one in there. So we had in a, just on an off night, and it turned out to be like insane, stupidly insane. Well, you know, lacrosse, I know, is a party town because I see the on YouTube the body cams. Uh, <laughs> I see body cams on YouTube. Uh, type, type in body cams and lacrosse. Uh, there's oh, yeah. a few of them that uh, are downtown in bars. And then I've never seen, I've never seen DJ Brentley there. I never see him in the background or anything. And these people are there like any place else. It just happened to be caught a body cam on YouTube. Uh, there's always it is. So Matt, are you fully booked this year? Yes or no? Never. There's no such thing as fully booked. Anybody that says they're fully booked just doesn't want to work. Um, I mean, sure, you could say fully booked on Saturdays, but even that's not true. I've got 56 weddings this year and another 10 or 12 school dance, corporate, et cetera. Um, but uh, my books are always open. I, I don't ever stop taking bookings. If I'm not available, I try to to uh, sub it out to one of my other DJs that works for Social Entertainment. Not works for, but works with, I guess you could say. Um, if they don't, but that's the problem. A lot of people come from my Instagram and they want me. They don't want somebody that works for me. They want me. So even though my other DJ is going to give the same experience, it's, I mean, look, I, I'm just Mr. Personality, well, apparently. I don't know. Well, no, no, well, not only that, man, and don't take this the wrong way, you, now your persona and stuff like that, but yeah. what you show on there to people, the video on your gig logs on Instagram. And again, if you're not following these guys on social media, Instagram, Facebook, the YouTubes, <coughs> you're really missing out a lot. And when you watch the stuff, you look at the pictures you have up there in the video, even your background right now, that lasers show you have behind you. It's one of the things that people see that and not sound bad. You're kind of like a little bit of a celebrity and they want to have you there. And they want Keanu Reeves, not the guy who looks like Keanu Reeves. And it, it, it's kind of one of those things, you know, they want DJ Brutley because of the fact that they know what he gives. They don't want his daughter DJ. Not that his daughter couldn't do it. But the thing is that, you know, it, it's not the same person. And I'm just using your daughter as an example. I saw her turn her head around. <laughs> you know get that girl a party mix a new mark party mix they're great for kids yeah she, 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 she plays she's a lot awesome right? I, I do i do appreciate her and she always adds a little bit of humor to the show yeah. she's an awesome young lady you do a heck of a job as a dad there it's fun it really you is know. i won't lie so you know it, it's one of the things that um a little guy coughs more um so battling whatever three weeks later i'm still coughing uh probably cough for another couple more weeks <laughs> great um it's one of the fun things when you're doing all this and you're, you're going through everything and you're going through all your social media and you're putting stuff up there when you do your social media be it youtube be it instagram be it facebook and you're putting pictures up there and you're putting stuff up there whatever it is up there do you go back and look at stuff and catch things that you did not see the first time around you put it up there? Something that you missed and you're like, ooh, either good or bad. Like, ooh, yeah, maybe I should change that picture. And do you go back and change the picture or do you just leave it up there? Because what goes on the interwebs is always there forever because you use what's called a time machine and go back and see if something's changed. So cool thing. Do you ever go back and change? I. Right. Mm. He took down his live stream. Yeah, because it didn't go well. Because I had troll after troll after troll. It just yeah, kept... people people being people being jerks on live streams. Again, that's I understand that. I I, I would take a live stream down too. People were being I would I would basically kick them if they were being jerks too. I I, I have no t patience for that whatsoever. 
the um but i'm not saying that i'm saying you know did you put up a picture on instagram and go oh well hey yeah uh there's some cables there out of place ah, oh yeah oh, this yeah. picture's better I, I got a good story for that i i uh my solstice guest books the audio guest book site um for our photo booth we have one amazing picture of the photo booth setup but it just happened to be at the one venue that didn't allow tape on the floor so all you see is this one white wire going behind the props table to behind the backdrop into the wall and i'm like looking at that picture i'm like Phew. so i have facetune uh the app and i was able to go in and get rid of it and erase um, the other wire okay yeah so it's it's oh, still yeah. there on my on my wherever i first posted it but on the separate business we're advertising the photo booths you can't see it in the picture well, so. what about you mr dixon what have you run into a picture or something you put up and you're like oh man there's a cable there or just something that's out of place you're like oh i wish i would have caught that before i put it up uh, no not pictures or anything but i have put up because i'd also do music and stuff i put posted things and then after i listened to it, i was like "Ooh, that <laughs> i made a mistake or a misspell misspelling that i didn't catch but most of the time, I just keep it up. Brentley, what about you? I learned years ago from one of my former bosses, be very conscientious and tactful about anything that touches social media. Even if you put it on your personal page, don't do anything that's going to be detrimental to your business. And with that, anything I put up on my pages... It may not be like the picture may not be perfect. You might see a cable here and there, but my content is very conscientious of who may be looking at my page. And possible customer, if it was yeah. just me, if it was just me doing clubs. I probably wouldn't care. I would probably get a lot more edgy and racy with my uh, posts, like I was when I was only doing clubs a couple of years back, when, or when I was predominantly doing clubs. Now that I'm doing more weddings. Last thing I want to see, you know, have some is have some couple see, you know, me saying something that's, you know, slightly DB ish or impolite, offensive. And in this day and age, it may not mean anything except what it actually said, but I don't want somebody taking anything the wrong way out. Well, now with YouTube, with the algorithm for foul language. And, and, and you guys watch this show. You, if you watched it for a while, you know we don't have foul language here. Um, that's one of the things I always go over with everyone uh, and tell everyone not to use foul language here. Um, but that was even before the algorithm got changed. YouTube's algorithm for foul language will penalize you for those bad words. And you want to make sure that you you want you want to make sure you don't you don't have that. And you want to make sure that, you know, your stuff is put up there clean. So if you got edit something, you know, before you put it up there, edit it. You know, there's plenty of times we're all recording ourselves. You know, I use my phone, record, you know, hey, it's Buddy with TBM Productions and recording myself. And all of a sudden I, I start saying the wrong thing, wrong venue, wrong stuff, wrong date, whatever. And it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay. That's your, that's your, your those are your, your junk rolls. Those are your junk videos. You just get rid of them and, and drop them. But um, I get this. Um, when I look back at older gig logs from 2018, 2019, before I started to professionalize my setup, I was like, what was I thinking back then? I was looking at a daddy daughter dance. I was like, oh man, my scram wasn't even down below all the way to the table. But you grow. So That's I, the thing is, if I go back and look at the videos I have up on YouTube, there's one of my early videos on YouTube. I'm in my driveway with Tracy, we're going through our equipment. I'm, I have my old, my old, old Sperner, which is a white one in the background blocking my neighbor's house across the way. It's the camera's pointing down my driveway of all my speakers out. And it, it's, it's a lot of stuff I don't even have anymore. And I look at that video. I'm like, wow, I've grown so much from there to now. And as a DJ, you should always be able to look back and say, you know, it, it just like, uh, just like Dwayne's, uh, uh, what he said, he started off with a small Hercules controller and worked his way up to an SX2 and, you know, has worked his way up more and more for equipment. And you, yeah, the DJ, you should always be perfecting your equipment, your, your craft. And like, you know, Matt, I'm sure when Matt first started, he didn't have the best equipment. And now look at him. He's got, he's got CO2 cannons, sparklers. He's got, you know, uh, you, you know, he's got lasers that do crazy things. It, we've all grown. And that to me is the important part. It's where we've grown 
and how we became positive and how we as DJs can hopefully help out people out there in, in, in the world and help other DJs out so they don't fall into the same pitfalls that we ran into. And this is what the show is about. It's about sharing information, sharing our problems, our faults. We are human. And then hopefully other people think about it and go, yeah, hey, you know what? I heard so, so-and-so say about this. Uh, let me try that. Let me try this other way of doing it. And it's not a right or wrong thing. It's looking at things in different perspectives. And every, that's why everyone's here. That's like hearing all these different voices because everybody's got a different perspective. Everybody's got a different life. Everybody's got a different area of the country. And with those different different uh, things in the country, give you a different perspective on things. And it, that's a great thing about having everyone here on the show is having all those different thoughts and everything like that. So with that said, we got another show in the books, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourselves. Again, if you're watching this live, thank you so much for watching it live. If you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to click that like button, subscribe, follow the channel, and make sure you follow these other guys here. And um, Mr. Dixon, I, I got to thank you for coming on to the show tonight. Uh, I hope that uh, you enjoyed yourself, and hopefully we'll have you back here on here again at a future date. And, hey, thanks uh, for having me. Yourself. All right, guys. Thanks.